Hola, welcome to my channel, Clear Vision, uh, where today I'm gonna to be talking about empaths and boundaries and how to protect yourself in toxic relationships. If you're an empath, you might find this quite challenging to protect your energy and maintain your well-being in a world full of emotional stimuli. In this video, I'm gonna explore what it means to be an empath, why boundaries are crucial, and practical strategies for setting and maintaining those boundaries especially in toxic relationship dynamics. So let's get started. What is an empath? And I've done a video on this actually. I did empaths and narcissists. Uh, but empaths are individuals who are highly sensitive to the emotions and the energies of others. They often feel other people's emotions as if they were their own, which can be both a gift and a challenge. From a Jungian perspective, empaths may have a heightened ability to tap into the collective unconscious making them particularly sensitive to the emotional undercurrents around them. And empaths in toxic relationships, particularly with narcissists, can be particularly challenging for empaths because narcissists often exploit the empathic nature of empaths, drawing them into manipulative and emotionally draining dynamics. Uh, I've done a video on this, so I'll put this up here. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for empaths to protect themselves and maintain their emotional health. Why boundaries are crucial for empaths? This is, they're essential to protect uh, your, as an empath, your emotional and mental well being. Uh, without these proper boundaries, empaths will become overwhelmed, exhausted, and even physically ill from absorbing, absorbing too much emotional energy. So these boundaries help empaths distinguish between their own emotions and those of others, allowing them to maintain a sense of self and avoid uh, emotional burnout. Some practical strategies for setting boundaries are, first of all, self-awareness. Start by becoming aware of your own emotional and energetic states, becoming aware that you take them on. You know, it's, it's a lot of people treat it like a badge of honor being an empath, but you do have to learn to protect yourself. So, and the first way to do that is to recognize what's going on for you emotionally and energetically. Practice this mindfulness or meditation to help distinguish your own feelings from those uh, that you absorb around others. Reflect on your interactions and identify when you feel drained or overwhelmed because there'll be certain people that will do it more to you, certain situations. And this is kind of discerning, is this mine, is this theirs? If it's mine, I don't want it. Uh, sorry, if it's theirs, I don't want it. You know, I give it back. You know, maybe you do yourself something a little bit like that, have a word with yourself. Well, well, well this is not my energy. I've taken on the other person's. I I'm gonna give it back, I'm gonna give it back. Communicate clearly is another way. Um, learn to communicate your needs and limits assertively. Use I statements to express how certain situations or interactions make you feel and what you need to protect your well-being. For example, oh, I feel overwhelmed when you raise your voice. I need us to have calmer discussions. Um, and then the two of you can go into what's going on for you, um, what it's doing to you. This isn't about manipulating other people to kind of create an environment where you can, they're now bowing down to you and, and making everything really cushy for you. This is about a mutual understanding of what's going on, you know, raised voices, raised energies, aggression, et cetera, et cetera, can really, well, it's damaging for anybody, let alone an empath. So it's, it's learning to calm that stuff down um, and expressing that, that this needs to change. Physical boundaries uh, are also included. So establish physical boundaries in your environment, which, may mean setting aside a personal space in your home where you can kind of retreat to and recharge and helping your partner understand, you know, be empathic your, that to your partner that they might not understand that where you're coming from. Well, why do you need downtime? Why do you need to switch off? Why do you just need to stare at the wall or whatever it is or put your feet in the river or go and look at the sunset? Help them understand what's going on for you. You're recharging. You need that personal space to rebuild your batteries sort of thing recharge your batteries and also learning to limit physical contact with certain people who really do drain your energy so again learning to protect yourself create this sanctuary where you can relax and rejuvenate and don't put yourself straight but it always constantly into stressful draining situations with particularly draining people have some emotional boundaries developing these emotional boundaries um, or develop them by recognizing that you are not responsible you are not as an empath responsible for solving everybody's problems. You might feel them, but you're not there to solve them all. You're, you're, not, mad, you're not that powerful, no one's that powerful. You can't solve, solve everybody's problems, you can't save everybody. You can offer support without taking on their emotional burden. And again, remember to protect yourself, take your time out. 
limit it. Remind yourself um, that this is okay to say no and to prioritize your own needs, which is really rather difficult for an empath, but it is really, really essential for emotional and physical health and energy health. Time management is another good one. Manage your time wisely to avoid overcommitting and prioritize activities and interactions that nourish you and limit exposure to those that deplete your energy. Again, it's all kind of the same thing. Uh, schedule regular self-care activities to ensure you have time to recharge, ground out, enjoy something that's for you without constantly feeling everybody else and all of their energy. You can, if you're into it, do some energy cleansing. There are loads out there on the internet. If, if you're into it, practice, you know, I've got nothing against it, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I often burn sage myself or something like that. I chill out, I put my feet in the river, that's one of my things. Uh, just to cleanse stuff away and I might say whoa take it all away and, and kind of visualize it all running out of your body you know so practice these regular energy cleansing techniques grounding exercise visualization like I said using tools like crystals or sage there's nothing wrong with it um, to clear any negative energy I don't I don't get into whether or not it works or there's any science behind it whatever if it works for you it works for you if it's a placebo effect, it's a placebo, so be it, whatever, as long as it works. Clear out any negative energy uh, that you may have absorbed. Salt baths are good at it. Uh, spending time in nature, showers, things like that can also be effective. Again, you can have a shower and you can just kind of like visualize it all cleaning itself away um, and going down the drain. Uh, whatever works for you. Dealing with narcissists and other toxic individuals. Recognize manipulation. Be aware of common manipulation tactics used by narcissists, such as love, gas like love bombing and things like that, guilt tripping. If you're an empath, you need to know this stuff. You need to be able to recognize it and step away from it. Otherwise you're gonna get caught up in it and it's gonna do damage. So understanding these tactics can help you identify when you're being manipulated. And, and, and try to stay, stay detached where you can. Practice emotion, emotional detachment without feeling guilty for it. When dealing with toxic individuals, don't take their behavior personally. Uh, and remind yourself that their actions reflect actually their own issues and not your worth. They'll make it seem that way. That's to get you, keep you dancing to their tune, running on their hamster wheel. And so limit the contact whenever possible. Limit your contact with toxic individuals. If you must interact with them, keep conversations brief and focused on necessary topics because as an empath, you are naturally, they're attracted to you and you'll be drawn to them because you're empathic and you can feel their inner pain and turmoil, et cetera, et cetera and you feel drawn in, you might want to try to fix. Don't recognize the situation for what it is. The other way is obviously to seek support, surround yourself with supportive and understanding people, build a network of friends, family, and support groups who can provide emotional support and help you maintain perspective. There's also therapeutic support, working with a therapist. The visualization, some people visualize putting an, a, a cloak of protect, an invisible cloak of protection around them, stop signs in front of themselves, colors, waving a color in front of you to kind of like remind you, hang on, hang on, I know where I'm going with this. You know, I'm slipping in. So whatever works for you really, um, but like I said, the, the first thing is awareness that this is going on and that you are susceptible to this kind of stuff. Because as an empath, you are going to be susceptible. You are going to be drawn to certain behaviors, certain types of people. You are going to feel an overwhelming urge to help, to get lost in their stuff. And, and my, I think most empaths who I've ta ta spoken to at some point realize they have to practice self-care. Like we all do, we all have to practice self-care. You know, whether you're an empath or not, most of us need to practice self-care. So don't be afraid to do it. Don't feel guilty for doing it. Uh, I hope that helps as always. Uh, it's a brief overview. And until I see you next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios. <laughs>